We're listening to the Jailhouse phone calls from Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand here on the podcast and on our YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to search it uh, on YouTube, Hidden Killers Podcast, and you can uh, watch this as well, uh, as well as more video files, because uh, there's a lot of, of footage that came out of this document dump on the Ruby Frankie, Jody Hildebrandt case that really doesn't have a whole lot of audio, so it doesn't translate well into a podcast. Uh, but there is extensive video of them going into the home, rescuing the children. There's video that we've just put up on our YouTube channel, which is heartbreaking, uh, but it is of the children being rescued. So in a way, it's, you know, it, it, it's good to see that happening, but it's also uh, shocking to see the state that these children were in, that these two evil women thought was appropriate for raising children as a method of raising children. We're going to take now a listen to uh, Ruby Frankie talking uh, on the phone about being misunderstood. We've heard some uh, on some of our other posts about Ruby kind of coming out of it, if you will, recognizing the, the errors in her ways for lack of a better term. Uh, this, I don't know if it's quite that, but let's uh, let's take a, a watch or a listen to this and uh, hear what we can garner out of uh, Ruby uh, being misunderstood. Well, you called, you had to put her in a in a chair, and it was it was horrible. It was torturous last night hearing the screaming and and the banging and people. It's like okay, that's that's you know upsetting, but the most upsetting thing is that I am completely misunderstood. Mm. That is the most horrible feeling. Like my own family misunderstands me, they misinterpret me, and and poor Jody, they they misinterpret her, they misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people, and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. It's horrendous when you're doing evil things and not being accountable for your behavior, and people are looking at you, going, "What the hell are you doing? You can't do that." That's horribly wrong. And you can't take any sort of accountability. What are you? You're misunderstood. You're just misunderstood. Again, it's that type of thinking that allowed this behavior to continue, to go as long as it did, because they weren't wrong. You're misunderstood. And you know what? Every Joseph Smith, every... Mm. Every yeah, let's bring up the guy with the fucking gold tablets because he's a. <laughs> Don't even get me started on Mormons. Wonderful man of God has had to be misunderstood. He was also a fraudster as well, uh, and then finally got some hooks into people and started a religion, which still thrives to this day. That's right. Mm. And so I'm going to get out of this. Who knows? I, maybe, maybe in 10 days I'll get out of this. If I'm <laughs> Maybe in 60 years you know, I'll get out of this. If the, the truth prevails right truth. now or, you know, who knows, like 20 years? I, I don't know. I don't know how long. But I'm going to step out. I'm going to say I went through everything I have seen. God's children suffer. All the people here. She's 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 acting like she's a martyr. I've seen this suffering. I've, I've seen these horrible things. I've gone through the valley of the shadow of death. And I've come out the other side a better person. We've just misunderstood. Misunderstood. My jail cellmates have been beautiful women, but they've been hurt. You know, they've been deceived into drugs. And, and my heart it just has so much compassion for them. And I, you have compassion for anybody who's going to take attention off of you right now. Anyone you can talk about other than yourself, that's what you will go to. Compassion for the cause, and I have compassion for myself. And I, and then to be told that I'm suicidal, I'm like, no, no, that's not true. That's a shame, actually, because the world might be a better place with you not in it. Anyway, um, if you need to let Sherry, the... That was either Sherry or one of your siblings. Well, they're all in cahoots. One means all of them, but yes, you're right. In your hearing, I don't know if you've... Cons they're all in cahoots? 
Okay, so this is her talking about her siblings. I'm assuming this is a phone call with the parents again. Uh, they're all in cahoots, meaning they're all of a healthier mind than you. When everybody's against you, there might be a reason. There might be. Healthy people don't just gang up on somebody for the hell of it. We're not in fifth grade on the playground. Everybody's adults. People don't just, hey, let's go gang up on that bitch. No, there might be a reason for it, Ruby. There might be a reason most of your family has rejected you and said, I'm not, I don't want anything to do with her. She's scary. There's something seriously wrong with her, and she brings nothing but danger and negativity to our lives. So we're not going to be part of this. But they're in cahoots, at least according to Ruby. I considered this, I don't know if it would be helpful, but you could have the house. <clears throat> and, if, well, and if all the kids go to the house, you've got room there, and I, I, will, I will gladly stay away and, and let you guys be. So I don't know if that's helpful. I'm just giving it to you if it is. Thank you. And in the discussions with, with my attorney at that's the only way that we're going to retain custody of the children. That's fine. Might be Kevin. There, he's he this is thirty five years in this, and he said even if you are acquitted and um, are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under eighteen children. I figured such. I figured such. God told me. God. God told me when I was driving before I called you. I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything. And the Spirit said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not ready. That's not God. That's the law. That might be your subconscious going, you probably are going to lose your kids for the shit you did. That ain't God. I don't know. I, I, I have no problem with, with religion or belief systems and all that. Healthy people don't have this happen. He's not speaking to you like calling you on your, your cell phone. Hey, by the way, this is God. Um, I want to let you know um, you're probably going to lose your kids because you, you abuse the shit out of them. Yeah, the, uh, the, the cayenne pepper, I mean, that, that's straight out of hell. That's the devil. I mean... Why did you think that was me? I thought I it's not you. No, that was that was Satan. That was that was him. I uh cayenne pepper's not my thing. I'm more of a Mrs. Dash type of guy. Uh <laughs> clearly we're talking about someone who's very mentally ill, interwining it with religion and extreme beliefs, and this is what you get. This is the recipe when when you have all these things that build you and make you who you are and you're very weak-minded, this sort of shit happens. I think there's a lot more people out there like Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt that are hiding behind the mask of religion. Let's continue on. And God told me I'm done. And I, I just, oh. Uh, so. Mm. Satan has taken everything away from me. Satan has taken... No! Love. You did it! You did it! Satan hasn't taken everything away from you. You did. Ruby, Frankie, fucking did. Take accountability. Take some fucking accountability. It is not the devil who did it. It is Ruby Frankie's disgusting thinking and mind and never taking accountability for much of anything throughout your life. And you went this far. It's the devil, Satan, that did this. No, Ruby, it's you. It is you. And I'm a good woman. No. I don't do naughty things. You don't do naughty things. Ah. There's clearly some stunted growth going on here as well. Um, the, the kind of the high pitch talking, the I'm a good woman. I got to keep telling myself I don't do naughty things. That's weird. That's a very weird way of speaking because anyone who uses the term naughty, that's typically what you 
talk to a toddler with. Don't be naughty. Let's not do something naughty. That or you're, you know, in some sort of, you know, you know, sexual, let's be naughty. Like, I, I don't think this is what she's referring to, though. I, I think this is, it's a very interesting term to use. It's also a way that she is psychologically playing this down because what she did was not naughty. Naughty is uh, not coming in at recess when the bell rings. Uh, naughty is stealing someone's cookie at lunch. Naughty is not abusing the shit out of your children and duct taping them to the ground and pouring cayenne pepper on open wounds and not feeding them and locking them outside in the sun and not giving them sunscreen. That's not naughty. That's pure evil. And when you do those sort of things repeatedly, guess what you are? You're not naughty. You're evil. I don't do naughty things. I don't. I'm a really good girl. Look, I'm a, what the fuck? I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. Repeated. I'd love to know what the fuck happened to this woman earlier in life. Because I'm going to guess there was a lot of abuse. This does not excuse the behavior whatsoever. But sometimes when we have context of what people have gone through and been through and done, uh, it helps to make a little more sense of, of where the current situation is. Let's continue. Uh. Ruby, I'm going to do everything that I can okay. to keep <sighs> truth in our family. And Thank you. I'm, I'm committed to our family. I'm committed to you and our marriage, no matter what happened. <laughs> Thank you. That didn't last long. I will be here to support you in any way that I can. Well, thank you for stepping up. Thank you. Let me let me talk a little more dramatic as well. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you. Run for your fucking life, Kevin. And I think that's what he's doing now. Uh, but there is no one that should be standing by their partner when they do something like this, mental illness or not. If you care about yourself, if you care about your kids, the best thing is for everyone to have zero contact with Ruby Frankie for the rest of y'all's life. There is no benefit to anybody there. The trauma, the damage has been done. There's not going to be anything good that comes out of this, especially when this person still continues to believe that it wasn't their fault and it was all all simply a product of the devil. Like that? That was kind of fun, wasn't it? Let's continue. This, I this... do need to go. But okay, all right. Call me back when or if you need. When will you find out? How can I call you? When should I call so I find out what they say? I don't know how long this will go, but if you call this afternoon, I, I will know. This is a preliminary hearing, so there will be no... Okay. Well, it's hard to get a phone around here. I asked for a phone, and it took hours to get it, so I may, it may not be until later tonight. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. Good luck. I will be praying for you. you. <laughs> She'll be praying. <laughs> got to get those prayers from Ruby, because you have the real prayers from Ruby. You know, you're kind of fucked. You got to get those prayers from Ruby, you know, because... <laughs> Devil. You know, might make her do some other shit. So. We got a lot more to come. Uh, there is so much in this this dump of <laughs> it's like a dumpster fire uh, of Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand. Press subscribe wherever you're listening so you don't miss it. You can watch this on YouTube and see me as animated as I've been getting as well. As you can tell, I'm a little bit uh, yeah uh, yeah. Anytime this shit involves kids and parents that are fucking insane, uh, it gets me a little upset. Uh, so there's more to come. Press subscribe, and we will bring it to you right here from the Hitting Killers podcast and True Crime Today. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.